Hello, on Tuesday, February 28th, 2012, you're listening to Brian and Gabe and Jack and Ron live. That's the energy that you were missing last week, man. Are you having a better day? I had to make up for it. <laughs> <laughs> we're doing good. And yeah. back down to normal. <laughs> well, I just found for those people from San Francisco, there's actually a, a little kiosk that sells blue bottle coffee uh, on my way from the subway to the office. And blue bottle coffee will change your life when it comes to coffee. Uh, and uh, and it's, it's, I used to have to go out of my way for it. But now that I can drink blue bottle, uh, it's really, really awesome. I wonder if they would pay us, give us free coffee for that. <laughs> Is that like a brand or something out there? Yeah, and it's one of these things where it's locally roasted, but they... Uh, they roast the beans like, um, I guess, regular beans. They roast them so they have a really sh long shelf life. And these, they don't roast them as much. So the beans, if you buy a bag of beans, only last like two weeks. Um, oh. But it's amazing. It's so, so it, it tastes like coffee. Like, I feel like coffee smells amazing but tastes like shit a lot of times. <laughs> and this tastes as good as it but smells. The, but weren't you, weren't you just telling me last weekend about how the blue bottle people like frou frou you because you use a uh, drip coffee maker? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cause, yeah, I was asking about some flavor or something like that. What's this like? And they asked, yeah, how I do it, how I make it. And I mentioned it's automatic drip. And they definitely gave me the eye roll like, you know, <laughs> I was putting some, uh, some Sam's Club tires on their M5, you know. <laughs> like how dare you grind up beans and pour hot water through it, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Ugh. Um, well, and, and other parts of the world right now are looking at us and going, this is your problems. <laughs> <laughs> FML, man. <laughs> always, always have to bring it down. No. Uh, well, I love that Billy Crystal from the Oscars, the one line here, which I love is, you know, nothing buoys American spirits by uh, than watching an evening full of millionaires giving each other gold statues. <laughs> <laughs> You know, uh, few, last week I tweeted something that said something like, you know, if you buy Angry Birds with Verizon on a Verizon Android phone, do you still have to buy it if you have a Sprint Android phone? And Kevin Goodman <laughs> tweeted something along the lines of, ah, the problems of a first world country. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, <laughs> uh, so Ron, we're, we're glad that th I think this is your first time yeah. joining us on this version of our show. I know you've been on. We've been doing podcasts kind of on and off for years, and I remember we did some podcasts at Bride Form 2006, and, and you were there. Um, Ron, of course, probably most people know, but he was one of the 10-time uh, Bride Form speakers. I'm holding up your bobblehead <laughs> in front of the camera. <laughs> Actually, we should have. I don't know if you got a video feed, Ron. If not, we're putting the picture of the bobblehead. <laughs> I mean, did we even mention that these are available on YouTube now? Oh, yeah. Uh, these shows not the bobbleheads. are available but... on YouTube. <laughs> Oh, yeah. The video shows are available on YouTube now. So this is our, um, you know, if you want to watch it later and see what we look like. It's very exciting to watch us sit around with headphones on and talk to each other. <laughs> I actually, hey, and the shame is I actually think I'm going to miss the uh, Bryform Europe this year. I, I'm like so swamped with everything, you know, I've got going on. And I didn't have time to really come up and think of a, you know, new and exciting topic. So I didn't want to. Uh, burn any of your cycles this year so i think this might be the first one i've missed since you know babe, way back in washington dc you got your 10 you're out uh, i got my 10 and out right yeah well i will tell yep. you that we should you want to i know you know creating a session takes a lot of effort also so i don't want to sort of put that on you um but i feel confident that we can say that anyone who's spoken at every single bribe forum you're allowed to have your own deadline uh for submitting <laughs> sessions so i feel like that's very i feel like that's fair plus you know, it's Brian Foreman, I'm Ryan, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll think about it some. This, you know, this last month was, like, crazy for me, but I'll, I'll give it some thought. Maybe I've got something cool that I've been doing internally that, that might be interesting. You know, my latest things have been burning down, uh, for some of our customers, has been burning down a bunch of these uh, hardware vendors when they come out with those, you know, oh, I got 9 billion users on this server. And, and trying to educate them, I'm like, yeah, they ran, you know, notepad or something uh and i've been burning it down especially with with some of the hardware vendors because i've had access to that type of hardware and i've been able to run like login vsi and run, run real tests and and show that but I, I don't know you know ruben and those guys and and your own have that pretty nailed down so i'll give it some thought let me ask yeah, you what do you see i was i was trying to put together a presentation just for for something that we're doing and 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 and, and i see these uh all, all the 
the estimations of what how many IOPS a Windows 7 box can do. So, and they have them these generalized things like task worker, power user, you know, and then like I forget what the other one was, but 20 IOPS is the max that Windows 7 says it can have. And I, and I feel like when you start generalizing things that much, you're asking for a lot of damn trouble. Yeah, that, that's all bullshit. The, the that's whole what twenty, I... <laughs> the whole twenty IOP thing, right? What they're doing is, and and some of that's based on some of the original work from from uh, Ruben, Ruben and your own, mm-hmm. and them kind of they have to generalize so people can wet their thumb and stick it in the air and say, okay, I need about this much, so a starting point. You know, the the reality is though is, and and it was great that you guys, uh, that Brian, you guys put up the. Uh, uh, beverages, uh, statistical math for VDI because he hit it oh, dead yeah. on the center, right? So a VDI <laughs> instance might use, let's say for a heavy worker, 20 IOPS. What's the, what's the standard deviation for that? Right. And it's where probably is huge, it, right? At login, he's probably using a thousand IOPS, you know, it's enormous. It's enormous. Yeah. I mean, if, if it only had 20 IOPS, uh, no one would ever need an SSD in their laptop, but we all know that when we <laughs> slam an SSD in our laptop, it rocks. Right. That's amazing. Like there's there's a there's a tweet right there. I mean that's that's that <laughs> sums up the IOPS. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. So yeah, that's so I mean I, I guess so is that still the baseline that people are using when they're trying to figure this stuff out? Or are they are they I mean, I, I guess that gets you there. Should you just like take whatever you figure out for twenty IOPS per power user and then double it or triple yeah, it or quadruple I, it? I mean Yeah, I think that Or should you just are, abandon it? I, I think that people need a starting point to at least to at least say what type of disk do I need? So, mm-hmm. so let's use twenty as an example for a second. If they take the number of uh, active sessions that they're thinking per host, and they multiply it by twenty, and they come up with you know something simple, eight hundred I/O with some type of read/write pattern, they can mm-hmm. at least say, okay, I can get X number of disk, and I'll be kind of in that range. Um, Whereas if they took that same number and, and, you know, they talked to Cisco and some sales rep told them they were going to get, you know, 279 sessions on this Cisco blade <laughs> that can only contain two drives. And they go, right. yeah, there's no way I can do it there. I have to move up. I think the real I.O. problem, and it's funny, you know, a couple of, you know, three years ago now when I started at, at Unidesk, Chris, the CTO, and I were talking about this I.O. issue. And for a while, we were really getting pushed by people inside the company and people outside of the company to go do a boatload of memory caching to solve the IO problem. And Chris and I over, you know, nights and beers just kept saying, this is a hardware problem that we brought on ourselves by demanding cheap disk space. You mean that's going to be solved. Chris Midgley from uh, Unidesk. Yeah. Uh, That's going to be solved on the hardware side. And now two years later, you can see, you know, whether it's kind of, Low end disk, like you know, and I hate to call it low end disk because I actually like the stuff, but less expensive disk like Equalogic, with their XVS, where they're dynamically moving data into SSD that needs to be there and using some of the SSD for a write cache, mm-hmm. or whether it's the big EMC uh, shops with you know fast cache and all that. Problems being solved on the hardware, you know, throw some SSD at it to use in the appropriate places, and then dump all that other stuff off on spindles, you know. Yeah, that's. I mean, that, and and there's a lot of all-in-one products that are coming out that are kind of niche or or mm-hmm. very specialized. Zio, you know, for instance, I I think is doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, so and you know they're doing it in three U chassis that are just for, uh, well they they market it towards desktop virtualization, but they're they're for all sorts of other applications too. But at least they're not giant huge boxes of iron sitting in the data center. The the real problem we're seeing now that no <laughs> one's really talking about. I mean, I I've had a couple of tweets on it and people have responded. But the real problem that no one's really talking about is the the enormous amounts of F and data that we're throwing on centralized disk, which I don't care what it is, it's more expensive than local disk, that's completely useless. I had a customer I was talking to on Friday uh, last week that I was trying to I was trying to basically show him ways to get around this problem, but he has a bunch of engineering students like like you know, a thousand of them. It's it's a technical school. They their their students do everything from app development to you know like, uh, you know how to design a bridge and crap like that. So all of his machines require four gig, and he's sitting there figuring out all this math. And he figured out that you know it, it should have hit him earlier, but if he figured out that every machine by default is going to get a vswap file that's four gig large, Windows will default to a four gig page file, but he's going to reduce it to two. But if he's got a thousand users 
He's got over six terabytes of page files <laughs> of just on his centralized computer. storage. Yeah. <laughs> and he and he told me right up, he goes, Look, I already bought three of these XVS arrays, and now I'm having to look at buying one of these uh non-hybrid, just rotating big 14 terabyte things. He goes, if I would have known I was putting six terabytes of page file on this, I would have threw this shit in the trash <laughs> before I ever started. <laughs> and the hardware vendors, EMC and NetApp, aren't going to tell you that, right? That that up to 50% of your space is going to be page file hitting your disk. But I think that when you talk to hmm. some of these other vendors that that have servers uh, and are willing to, to look at, can I leverage local disk? Can we start to put this transient type crap data on local disk to keep the cost down? That you're, you get a little more of a responsive ear than when you're talking to the guy at EMC. <laughs> Have yesterday I had a couple of beers with uh, these guys from a company I'm going to mispronounce. I want to say Tejile. It's T E G I L E. T I wanted to say Tegile. Tegile. I'm going to go Tejile. And he says we pronounce it like with a southern drawl. And I would say, oh, you mean the Tejile. But he says something like Tejile. Do you know these guys, Ron? No, no, I haven't heard of them. Okay, so I never heard of them either. Um, they make a hardware appliance uh, for storage, and it's kind of like what the vision is from Extreme IO that they announced like a year ago and still haven't. Um, well, I guess they never really announced it. I kind of like to be fair, like pried it out of them. <laughs> I think, but where, where they still the... sponsored Bryform and didn't tell us why you know they didn't share what the product was but they were still out there yeah and <laughs> i guess they they um anyway it's it's this it's this inline uh block level single instant storage so they are primary storage and they have you know nfs or iSCSI or fiber or whatever you want and um they can have random blocks with no hints completely unstructured just random blocks of data come in and when they see duplicates they're going to be able to um you know only store one instance of the duplicate, which means that a lot of that stuff goes into memory and into SSD, um, where these guys are kind of amazing. And, and the, the folks that started this company, this is their third startup, the first two they built and sold. Um, so they're like, it's like the, the like Chris, I guess, also, mm -hmm. um, and, um, and Don and those guys. But so they, the thing is, what's crazy about the, well, for, so first of all, um, the pricing, uh, their box, their entry level box is $16,000. But that gives you uh, 10 gig or 10 terabytes of usable storage. And this is not to mention the fact that by the time you have all this, you know, inline sort of single instance, it might be the equivalent of, you know, huge, huge amounts. Uh, yeah. And the other thing is they have 140 of these boxes in production among different customers now. So um, I wonder if that is kind of like this holy grail that I wanted because, you know, I've talked a lot about this before when I do. I want VDI to be persistent images because I don't want to make people jump through all these hoops and have to contort themselves to make um, all the layering stuff work, though I want to talk to, talk to you about that today, Ron. Um, <laughs> and so these, I mean, it seems super awesome, but I never even heard of these guys. You know, I think they've been selling their products for six months, and I guess I'm, I don't know if anyone else has <laughs> has heard of them. I guess you're not on the, not you guys on the phone anyway, but I guess yeah. we'll, we'll look into that. Um, 